I'm making this video to explain a little better about how confidence intervals work and how important they are. The rejection of the null has to do with confidence intervals, and I'm going to try to walk you through this real quick. So, so confidence interval and how they work with the null hypothesis testing. If you recall, you better recall, confidence interval is the point estimate, which is the sample mean normally, and we're talking about t-tests here, so it's the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error. So it's two numbers, right? It's the, it's the sample mean plus the margin of error, that's the high point, and the sample mean minus the margin of error, that's the low point. So you got this interval, you got this chunk of a number line. So let's keep going. So here's an example of a confidence interval for a single mean. Right? That means confidence interval. Normally we're always talking about the 95% confidence interval. But there's the formula, right? You take the sample mean, you plus or minus, all this stuff over here is the margin of error, right? That's the z-score that reflects what percent, 99%, 95%, 90%. But we're again, we're just going to stick to the 95%. And that's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this this right here, sigma divided by the square root of n, is, this, is the standard error. So, but that's what you're going to plus or minus. So let's do an example. So the sample mean is 6, and the margin of error is 2. So if we put that on a number line, right, 6 minus 2 is 4, 6 plus 2 is 8. So anywhere between these two red brackets, we think that the true population mean is in here somewhere, right? We're trying to trap the true population mean. Again, we're only about 95% sure because it's a 95% confidence interval. But you see how that works. So with an independent t-test, we're looking for the difference between the means. And I'm going to say that several times, the difference between the means. People always get this backwards. They, if they see a confidence interval of a single mean, that doesn't tell you anything about a t-test. Okay, that's not how it works. you got to compare two confidence intervals, one for the first mean, one for the second mean. And there's that big ugly formula, right? So this is the first group mean minus the second group mean plus or minus. And then this whole chimichanga over here is the margin of error. It changed because it's a different kind of test, right? This is a t-test. So, but S1 is the S1 squared. That's the variance of the first group, variance of the second group, sample size of the first group, sample size of the other group, second group. And this whole thing here, I believe, is called pooled variance. But you don't need to know that in this video. So let's do an example. So we got the first mean is uh, 19 and the second mean is 16. And the margin of error is a plus or minus 5. So that comes down to 3 plus or minus 5. Now, if we put that on a number line, right, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Right there. And 3 plus a positive 5 is, is 8. Sorry, let's put that out there. Pretend you didn't see that. So again, we're pretty sure, about 95% sure, that the true population mean, that's the moon, is between negative 2 and positive 8. We think we're pretty sure that the difference between the two means is between those two brackets there. But now remember, the null states this, that the first mean equals the second mean. They equal each other. And if we do a little bit of algebra, and if I subtract the, the second mean from both sides, I get this, right? If you, subtract the diff if you subtract the means, the difference will be zero. That's what the null states. Say it again. If you subtract the means, the difference will be zero. That's the same as mean one equals mean two. So... If you look at the difference here, this zero is right there. It's within the confidence interval. And that's exactly what the null states. That the difference between any two means will be zero. And if it's in a confidence interval, you cannot reject that null. I'll say that again. If you got zero in your confidence interval, you cannot reject the null. But that's between differences. Differences between the two means. Don't get that confused, okay? Let's say that again. You cannot reject the null if your confidence interval for between the mean differences contains a zero. 
So there's another way to look at it. Here's two different means. So our first mean is, pretend it's got a bar over its head, is 5 plus or minus the margin error of 2. The second mean is 7 plus or minus the margin error of 3. So if I plan these out here, here's, here's the green mean, right? So 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 plus 2 is 7. So I'm pretty sure that the green mean is between 3 and 7. How sure? About 95% sure, right? And then we repeat the process with the, with the maroon up here, the maroon mean. 7 minus 3 is 4. 7 plus 3 is 10. So between these maroon bars, it should be the other mean. Now, dig, they, they right the you have overlap here. You have overlap between the confidence intervals of the means. And that means you cannot reject the null either. But watch, you know, I can, I can move these. They could both be right here, right? They could be the same number. They could both be the same number, which is what the null states again. So again, you cannot reject the null if you have overlapping confidence intervals for individual means or if the difference of the confidence interval, the best shortcut that I know of is this. If a confidence interval starts with a negative number but ends with a positive number, you're not going to reject the null. Because if you look at it, right, anything that starts with a negative number and ends with a positive number is always going to have zero on it. So that, that's the easiest way to tell is if your confidence interval starts with a negative number on one side and ends with a positive number. And again, that's for the difference of the means. All right, I'm tired of talking about this, but I hope it helps. MGZ out.